Me encanta el pi... <laughs> I'm gonna make a video once I get home from work today. I just felt like it was probably important to like document my feelings right now. But like obviously I can't talk. <laughs> oh god. Jeez. Uh, oh, fuck. I didn't realize I was such an ugly crier. She's so sad. Um, so, well, I know the lighting is not really on my side right now, so I'm sorry if that annoys people, but, um, hmm. Well, I just got home from work, which is really weird to say, um, because home is new for me now. It's a, I'm not living with my parents. Um, those clips that started this video were um, from this morning, uh, right when I took the last of my things and left my parents' house. Um, Hmm. Mm. I, I have no clue where to begin on this. Like, this is going to be such a long video. So, I mean, yeah. Um. Oh, my God. Where do I begin? So, I guess I'll begin with me moving back home with my parents. I lived in New York City for three years, and uh, two years ago... Uh, the last day of September of 2017, I moved back home into my parents' house from New York City. Um, I needed back surgery, um, so I had that performed. Um, and I also was not happy in New York City, and there was way too many bad things that have happened to me there. And I could still go there from time to time and see friends and have fun but like in small doses because I just feel I feel like I could never live back in New York City just because there's just so many bad things that happened in such a quick three years um so in the last half of my time in New York City I was in therapy and it was the first time I had a therapist and it was pivotal in the changing of my life and me getting a grip on my life and me becoming self-aware um, and just more in tune with my self and intuition. Um, and through my work with my first therapist, um, a lot of topics about family were brought up and Oh my gosh, I guess I guess it doesn't matter to go into all the details of it. Um, by the time I decided I was moving from New York City and I was moving back home, I told myself in therapy that I wanted to move back home and work on my relationship with my parents. And like I was serious about it. And, you know, because I felt a lot of the negative effects of how my relationship felt with my parents were on me and I felt like it was my fault that I felt a disconnect or a problematic with my parents um so I put it on myself to change it and do what I can to make things better um so I moved home. I had my back surgery the next day after I came back home and I was like bedridden for about four months. Um, I wasn't working, I was doing nothing. Um, and I'm unfortunately the type of person, even though it's probably quite common, but like when I am alone to myself with too much time on my hands, I fall down such a dark hole. <laughs> and it allows me way too much time to think about things and it never ends well for me. So, oh my gosh, how do I even explain this? Okay, if I'm being, oh my gosh, I don't really want to talk about it. 
There's this person that I watch on YouTube. He's a financial, like, guru. He, like, really has been through a mess himself, and that's where he has gained the experience and knowledge to help others who are in, like, a financial mess. But um, a lot of his videos end up being about how a child's life could have looked so much differently had the parents like woken up like had or had the parents had a flipping clue of what was going on or how to be responsible or x y and z like the mess the child is put in is going to be it wouldn't be there it would have it would not be existing if someone oh he always says the the guy's name is dave ramsey by the way if anyone um is wondering so he always says this statement that always like rips my heart in two. He says, you know, love your child enough. And then he finishes the statement like, love your child enough to say no. Love your child enough to guide them. Love your child enough to dot, dot, dot. And it really wasn't... <sighs> Deep down, I knew something was always wrong with my relationship with my parents and how I connect with my parents. Um, and I think the problem with me is that, especially I'm the middle child, I'm the empathetic child, I'm the wants to make everyone happy child. So I think no matter how sad or hurt my parents have made me feel, I always told myself I'm not allowed to feel that. And I'm not allowed to accept that because, and I feel like this is most children. I find most children are probably raised in an environment where, you know, you're a bad kid if you go against your parents or, you know, you're not, or like if your parents provide you food and they put a roof over your head and they, you know, do like basically things a parent is supposed to do. So I don't know why people always hold that to a standard, but you know, your parents do those things, even though they're meant to do it, um, and you're supposed to just, like, worship your parents and, like, kiss their freaking feet. So, I don't know. I think for many, many years, I knew there was heartbreak with my parents, and I just was never... I never gave myself permission to say, my parent has hurt me, or my parent has failed me, or, you know, they have disappointed me. Um, and it really wasn't until Dave Ramsey's videos where I was like, wow, like here's a noble man, here's an educated man, here's a man who's been through absolute torturous financial despair and has worked so hard to get out of it. And here's this man telling me the reason why you're in this mess, and the reason why you're failed is because your parents did not love you enough to look out for you. And it's like, it really was his videos that kind of made me wake up for the first time. Um, like even therapy wasn't doing it, but his videos did. So I, oh, that light is weird. Um, oh, and then those lights are weird. I, I guess I just clenched onto his words and advice for dear life because it was the first time I heard from someone that my feelings were validated. And obviously my, my therapist in New York City was incredible. And I, I feel like if I saw him in person, I would fall to my knees and cry because he made an impact on me and my life and how I see myself and what I deserve in ways I didn't think was possible. It's, it's, his work was incredible. And so he was very validating, but I think to get that from someone who's not a therapist, because most therapists, hopefully if they're good ones, are validating and they learn about you and then they get an understanding about you. But the fact that this was a person, a stranger, who knew nothing about me, nothing about my situation or anything, and his words connected right into my heart of how I felt that it was like this, the most surreal validating experience I've ever experienced. And it was the first time through his videos that 
I realized that you are able to accept that your parents did hurt you and they failed you and they let you down and they didn't guide you and this and that. Um, so that was towards the end of 2017 when I started to find his work and I feel like ever since then it was this path of you know really gaining real strong self-awareness and um building on my emotional intelligence and I really just haven't looked back since then and again like I said I wanted to move home because I knew my relationship with my parents was broken and obviously if I was going to be living under their roof but in general as their child I was hoping to have something healed and have it fixed and have it feel good for the like first time probably in most of my life um but I guess through Dave Ramsey's words but then also just my own journey like I started to realize it just wasn't possible and it wasn't gonna happen because both people have to want it and both people have to work really hard for it and like my parents just love being who they are and I can't hold it against them because I know so many people love to just be who they are whether it's good or not they are just so comfortable with what they know and that's it and so I, I, I can't say it's uncommon for them to have done that but I think I always took it as like I wish I was worth it enough of being their child that I was worth the effort to change and be different. Um, or at least at least work on themselves to be the best they can be. Um, and maybe in their broken reality, like they are the best they can be. Um, I don't feel like that at all. Um, and I always wanted the best for them. And I think that's where things are really tough with me because like when I grew up, like, oh God, this video is going to be two hours long. When I grew up, we we had like money struggles, like as early as I can remember. Like, it's always been bad. There's always fights. And, you know, I loved my parents so much um, because every child looks up to their parents at one point or another, like they are Superman and Superwoman and they can't do any wrong they know best, like, they're my leader, like, they guide me, so I feel like every child falls into this, like, oh my god, like, my parents are the best thing ever, so, um, I remember being, like, as young as I can remember, and being, like, well, maybe, like, middle school, <laughs> and being, like, wow, like, I want to work so hard one day, like my mom and dad do, because I want to be able to provide a great life for them, and, because I wanted them to have that. Um, and and I guess just that's because that's the person I am. But I realized through like Dave Ramsey's videos, but also me be growing into myself as an adult um, and realizing like what is responsible and what's not, what's a good choice, what's a bad choice. Like I used to have the mindset of like, oh, like, it's like a, a rigged system. Like my parents work so hard and yet they have no money because the system's rigged or the system's against them. Um, and I realize now that I'm my own adult, I'm gonna be 27 in a couple months, like I'm not a kid anymore. Um, and now I've experienced life as an adult. I have bills. I lived in one of the most expensive cities in the world at such a young age. Like. I know what it's like to survive and I see that they got in their situation because of them. Every choice they made has led them to be in the position that they're at. And again, like I can have compassion for it because they're only doing what they know. And you know, if, if you're raised to be defeated, you're going to grow up and become a defeated adult. And I think that's where a lot of my anger sits with them is because they raised me to 
tell me life is always going to be stressful. You're never going to get ahead. Everyone always has these problems. So basically just accept it and go on and deal with it. And for the longest time, literally probably until like a year ago, maybe two years ago, I was stuck. That was me. I was like, this is it. Like, I can't achieve what I want to achieve because blah, 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 blah. Um, and I just, re I realize now that their life is their life because of the choices they made. And I have to keep reminding myself because I feel like I was always made to feel guilty as a child of like the cost of raising a child, but like they, they make good income. And for the most part of their life, they've always made good income. Um, the thing is, it's the choices that they have made have, like I, mm, oh my God, this is gonna be the longest video ever. I think one of the most pivotal moments where I realized like my mother is just broken and no matter how much I'm going to try to help her see differently, it's not going to happen was, I don't know, her and I were having a conversation. I guess it was probably a semi-argument and all I said was something along the lines of like, like you and dad could have had the entire world they could have had it all, you know, they could have had such an easy life. It could have been so nice, but they just decided to take the route of being the victim and being stuck and what was me and it can't be any different. And like my mother responded to that saying, well, no one told us we could. And that's when I knew, that was the moment I knew my mother is stuck. She's stuck, she's broken, she doesn't, I guess hopeless is the word. Um, and this goes with my father too. I talk about my mother all the time because she and I were best friends, like literally best friends, like which had its negative parts too because I also ended up being her therapist. I ended up being her husband because my dad is emotionally unavailable um, and always has been my entire life. Um, and it was just the way I so easily said, like, you can have it all. And you just, like, made so many mistakes that you, you ruined that. And the fact that she said, like, she needed someone else to tell her that she could have a good life rather than her just know it herself that's how I knew I am not connected to this. And I, I have to break out of this because I see from generation to generation, the more I hear stories that like, this is a family pathology. Like this is how my family rolls. Like grandparents struggled, my parents struggled. And now like even my sister and I, because we were so misguided, we're in so much student loan debt. It's awful. And I feel like from that, we it's this pathology of just being stuck at failure rate and not knowing you could be better or have a better life. So, oh my God. Um, this video is all over the place. This probably doesn't even do justice how I feel. No one's probably been watching at this point. It's like 20 minutes in. Um, so... I think where I'm struggling is like, I'm fighting between two people because there's the young me who was raised to take care of everyone and raised to be a good boy and not go against your parents. And then there's adult me here that's saying like, well, fuck them. Like you deserve to be happy. You can be happy. I currently am happy and I'm so thankful for that. It's like the first time ever. Um, you can have this good life despite what your mother told you and father told you your life can be. I can have all that. So I'm stuck between like the screw you mom and dad and the oh god I don't want to hurt my parents and let them down. So like I'm a mess right now and I think I'm probably always going to be. Maybe not. I shouldn't set myself up for that. Um, you know I tried so hard 
with my mother to get it. And, you know, I've told her stories from my childhood that she was not around because she was at work to know stuff that was happening. And um, her answer to that always would be, well, it's not happening now, so why does it matter? And again, that's another example of me looking at my mother and saying, like, my mother cannot give me what I need because I just, I'm a, I am a highly emotional person and I totally know that and I, t I wear that badge proudly because there's nothing to be ashamed of with that. But like, I don't know, I guess I'm just realizing very recently, like my parents just can't give me what I need. And I think I've tried so, so hard to spell it out and I just keep getting nowhere with it. So, hmm. or there was another example where I, at the same time I was like becoming very self-aware, I also was very depressed um, because I was bedridden. I feel like reality was slapping me in the face. I should say too that I think for me to be a grown adult back under the same roof where I had my childhood, where my childhood has hurt me so much, I think made the whole experience even more surreal and more like eye-opening and just tough. Um, but I'll never forget, this was another moment where I was like, my relationship is never gonna be right with my mother that, um, like I said, it was like towards the end of 2017, I was completely defeated and depressed. I remember so much, I could cry. I remember so much there were nights where I just was trying to fall asleep and I just said, I just wish a car would hit me. Like, I just wish I would die. Like, I, I was there. Like, I felt I was at my end. Like, for the way I describe what my end looked like. Look at me trying to validate myself. Um, I, I was ready to die. I was absolutely ready to die at the end of 2017. And I'll never forget, I woke up one day, my mother was off from work and I went downstairs. Um, it was very early in the morning, like eight in the morning. And I told my mom, I was like, I think she asked me a question and I said, Ugh, like I have no drive and I have no energy to do it. Like I just feel like such garbage emotionally. Like I, I let her know it was like an emotional thing. And her answer to it was, well, have you taken your medication? And, oh God, it just made me feel so disconnected from my own mother. And again, like, she only knows what she knows. And like, maybe it makes me a bad person. I don't know, and I don't know if I'll ever know. But it's like, that's, that's just not enough. Like, that's not enough to raise a child and not want to be the best version of yourself to give and create the best version of a child. And like, again, so I know she lacks emotional intelligence and her answer is always the quick fix, which would be, did you take your antidepressants? And, you know, I just, what I would have wanted so bad was a mother to sit me down on the couch and be like, what is going on? Like, how are you feeling? Like, what can we do together to get through this? And the answer was, are you taking your antidepressants? And I just felt so let down and disappointed. Um, so those are some examples with my mother. We're literally like 25 minutes into this and I haven't even talked about my father yet. Oh, my father, oh my God. Um, my dad is completely broken. My dad is a broken person. He's not whole, even probably 20%. Um, he had a rough childhood, so I can empathize with him. His father died when he was young, and which left his mother to raise two children, and they were poor as fuck, very poor. And I see the absolute correlation with poor, defeated dad as a child that bled into my dad being an adult and thinking it can't get better, it won't get better, I'm a victim of the system, this is how my life is always gonna be. 
So that mixed with my mother and them raising me on that ideology. Like they literally made me feel like there was no hope for my future. Literally, I promise you. I remember I would be, it was like in my high school years and like just the thought about college and like it really was the thought of me having to, you know, graduate high school, graduate college and then work for the rest of my life. It felt so dreadful because... They basically were saying, we work our ass off and we're still broke as shit. Even though now as an adult and I could realize things that they made good money and they could have had an excellent life and a ton of fun, but they chose a very expensive house that they never could have afforded. The payments were crazy. Um, they were buying new cars every couple years. Um... My mother racking up insane credit card bills like every other month. Um, like, yeah, okay. I don't know where I'm going with that. But I just, I just, I, I don't have any connection with my father. Um, when I was very young, like I know our, I know our relationship up till the end of high school was fine. That's not even true. My father was just abusive. Um, I don't want to go into more detail on that. He was just abusive. Um, and he was abusive when my mother wasn't home. And, like, it scared me. Like, I would be afraid to go home from school because I knew my dad was going to be home and my mother was going to be at work at night. And... Like, this was like in middle school, like in early high school and just high school in general. And like, what environment is, what what life is that for a kid? That school stressful and I was closeted. So I had like a stressful school life to then be scared to go home because who knows what my dad is gonna do while my mom is gone. And like, how, how can I as a young child connect with a father who scares me and makes my environment at home unsafe? I can't, I cannot do it. And I think is it was just from there, like my my middle school years, my early high school when like things were really bad, um, and two he would like scream at my mother when uh, credit card bills would be insane. So that was her problem with money, and then his problem with anger, and then I was put in the middle of it, and it was this big flipping ordeal all the time, simply because they couldn't be responsible and get it together. And I was thrown in the middle of that. That probably should be put at the beginning of this video because that's essentially the flipping thing. Um, God, I don't even know where I'm going at this point. Um, I can't have a relationship with that. And you know, the older I've gotten and the more of a man I've grown into and the more of a responsible adult I've grown into, I have built huge resentment towards him for what he emotionally put me through. And you know, the fact that he, everyone always has the choice in their life to be better. Like I, like, I had a drinking problem at one point. I was suicidal two years ago, and I've been suicidal before that. And I have put in such hard work through therapy and just educating myself to have gotten to a point where this year has been the happiest year of my life, and I never thought it was possible. I never thought the person I am now, I could be. And all it took was for me to look at myself and say, I deserve to have this and I can have this. That's all it took. And the fact that they couldn't even do that for themselves and they were that stuck and that defeated that they couldn't even simply just turn their life around. 
and maybe I sound like a piece of garbage because I know what it's like to be so devastated and so defeated that the last thing you want to do is work hard on yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was my life for so many years. But you have the choice to stay defeated and stuck in this one way or make the change and the choice to be different. I know this video is very long. If anyone is literally watching it at this point, like, I love you. Like, you are the bomb. You are, you're it. Like, you're that bitch. So, um, but probably no one is. But if you are, like, I so appreciate you. Um, maybe leave it in the comments so I can give you a smiley face. Um, I think I'm gonna wrap it up because this literally could be, like, a two-hour video. Today was a day years in the making. And it wasn't really until maybe like a year ago I said I think I have to move out and cut contact. Um, but it really was an incident that happened about two months ago where I realized these people are always going to be this way and there's no changing it. So I either make the choice to stay in it or I make the choice to take care of myself for the first time and put me first. And... That's why I'm sitting here in a new home and taking care of myself because I have to. I'm trying to survive and I'm trying to be happy, fully, 100% genuinely happy for the first time in my life. It has taken so much hard work and so many years of practice and working towards it to get here. And I feel like me moving out and cutting contact to stand up for myself and say, like, I matter. So this is why I've made my choice. Like, today is the full circle. Um, I don't know when I'm going to upload this. Mark it in the history books. August 30th, 2019. Bradley changed his life and he stood up for himself. So I should say, too, I guess to wrap up this video, like, I'm devastated. Like, I mean, you saw at the beginning of this video, like, that doesn't come from nothing. Like, I'm heartbroken. Like, I'm shattered. Like, it's hard. It's weird because people, when you have the awareness that you deserve better, like, it's so easy to just, like, cut people out and leave. But, like, I ha you, you have to be real with yourself. Like, no child wants this. No child wants this. This isn't how it should be. It never should be this way. And, like, I just keep telling myself it's going to feel so much worse before it feels better. And I don't know when that better feeling is going to be, but, um, hmm, I don't know. But I definitely will make more videos on this because I think this is important. I'm on the, um... Uh, Reddit subreddit of um, it's called Raised by Narcissists um, and it has a, almost half a million people so I know this is a topic where there's a lot of people who are affected by you know family and uh, other relatives in their life who make them feel the same way I felt so it's been good to connect with a community of people who you could relate to and you don't feel so alone in it but um I know this topic matters and I know this topic affects so many people. So I guess I'm going to continue to make videos on this topic. But um, anyways, I really appreciate anyone who's watched this and um, I hope it was helpful in some way. And hmm, I guess that's it. So hmm.